Okay, we're going to start with just some sign numbers. So when you add a negative and a positive, you're going to take the difference between those two, which is 3 and 9. The difference is 6. And then you take the sign of the larger value. In this case, 9 is positive and it's greater than 3, so that's going to be a positive 6. Okay, now let's look at adding two negative numbers. Well, when you have two negative numbers and you're adding them, you're literally just going to add the two numbers and that value is negative. So 4 plus 7 is 11. Carry the 1. 1 plus 2 is 3 plus 1 more is 4. So that adds up to negative 41. So add and keep the sign. Now let's look at subtraction. We have 72 minus a negative 5. When you have a double negative, you can make those into positive because two negatives make a positive. So now we're going to add those together and we get 77. So those are the first three sign number problems. Now let's try another subtraction problem. What if we have negative 24 minus a positive 48? I like to rewrite this as addition. So I'm going to write it as negative 24 plus a negative 48. Now I can apply my addition rules. I'm adding, they're both negatives, so I add and take the sign. So 8 plus 4 is 12. Carry the 1. 4 plus 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7. And I carry the sign, so that's a negative 72. Okay, let's look at multiplying. Okay, multiplying, if you multiply two negatives, you get a positive. So a negative times a negative is a positive, and 4 times 16 is 64. So that's a positive 64. Now let's look at division. We've got a negative divided by a positive. So let's go ahead and decide on the sign. A negative divided by a positive is a negative because pos uh, negative values always come in pairs. So if you have a negative and a positive, the other term must be negative when you're multiplying and dividing. So my answer is going to be negative. Now I'm going to go over here and just for a second, I'm going to long divide. So I'm going to put 24.5 on the outside and 93.1 on the inside. And how many times will 24 go into 93? 24 is close to 25. So I'm going to estimate 24 plus 24 or 25 plus 25 is 50 plus another 25 is 75 plus a fourth one would be 100, but I don't have 100, so it has to be 3. So let's try that. 3 times 5 is 15. Carry the 1. That's 12 plus 1 is 13. Carry the 1. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7. Now let's subtract. 1 minus 5 is 6. I had to borrow, or 11, that was 11 minus 5 is 6. 12 minus 3 is 9, I had to borrow, 8 minus 1 is, or 8 minus 7 is 1. So now I need to ask myself, okay, how many times does 24.5 go into 196? Well, it's going to go, let's see, 2 goes into 2, oh, I forgot to bring down my 0, so bring down the 0, and that looks to be about, what? 24 doesn't go into 19, so I'm going to have to look at 24 going into 196. It goes several times. I'm going to estimate because 25 would be 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, 150, 175. I'm going to estimate 8 maybe. So let's take 8 times 5 is 40. Carry the 4. 8 times 4 is 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, carry the 3, 8 times 2 is 16, 17, 18, 19, and lo and behold, it comes out nice and evenly. So when I divide, I'm getting negative 3.8 with long division. 
So I hope that one, that was a little longer because I had to do my long division. Okay, let's look at another one where we are multiplying, okay? So what have we talked about so far? When you have multiply and divide, you've got to have two negatives. So this is a positive times a negative. So the answer is going to be negative. So that's the sign. Now, since we're a long divide or long multiplying, I'm going to go over here and stack it. And that's going to be 12.7 times 7.2. I'm going to ignore the sign because I've already figured out this is negative. Now let's go ahead and multiply. 2 times 7 is 14. Carry the 1. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. 2 times 1 is 2. I put my placeholder a 0 because now I'm in the tens position. So 7 times 7 is 49. Carry the 4. 7 times 2 is 14 plus 4 is 18. Carry the 1. 7 times 1 is 7 plus 1 is 8. Draw my line. I'm going to add up. So 4, 9 and 5 is 14, carry the 1. 8 and 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11, carry the 1, and that's 9. Okay, so I've got 9, 1, 4, 4. But remember, I had some decimals. How many decimal places did I have? I had 1, 2 decimal places, 1 in 7.2 and 1 in 12.7. So I'm going to move my decimal in two places. So the answer is negative 91.44. So there we go and multiplying. Now let's look at this one, okay? I'm going to divide 84 or 86.4 by 13.5. And when I divide those, I'm going to have to um, set up my bracket again. So let's do this. We got, or what, let's do the sign first. When we divide, I know I have to have two negatives, and I only have one, so the answer is negative. Now let's set up on the outside, 13.5. On the inside, I'm going to have 86.4. So let's think for a second. When I divide 86.4 by 13.5, I've got to look how many times does 13 go into 86. Well, let's see, 13. If I double that, that's 26. If I double 26, that's 54. I'm up to four of them. Well, it's more than that. So if I add another 26, that puts me right around 86. So I'm getting close to 86. So I'm going to try six. So let's try six. So six times five is 30. Carry the three. Six times 3 is 18, 19, 20, 21. Carry the 2. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 2 more is 8. Okay, so notice I came in under, just under 86.4. I got 81.0. So now let's subtract. So that's 4 and 5. So let's bring down a 0. How many times does 13.5 go into 54? because I've got to think about this without a decimal, okay? Or three, if you want to think about bringing down, oh, I've already brought down my zero. So let's see, 13 and 13 is 26, but it's really 13.5. What, 13, 13 is 26. How many of those? It looks like I'm gonna have four, about four. So let's try four. Four times five is 20. Carry the two, four, times 3 is 12, 13, 14. Carry the 1. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 more is 5. And bingo, I subtract and I don't have a remainder. Now, where does my decimal go? I've lined it up, so it's going to go right up here, and that makes th sense. 13 times 6 is about 86, so that makes sense that the decimal would fall here. So, my final answer is negative. 6.4. That went, went nice and easily. Okay, so now let's do some multiplying. Okay, we're multiplying a fraction times a mixed number. Now, there are a couple ways to do it, but the way I like to do it is I like to go ahead and make this mixed number into an improper fraction. That means where the top is larger than the bottom. So I'm going to do what I call the circle trick. 
I'm going to multiply and then add. So 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 more is 5. So 1 and 2 thirds becomes 5 thirds. So I now have 3 fourths times 5 thirds. Now I can multiply. And when you multiply, you go straight across and multiply the top and the bottom. Now, some people like to go ahead and cross cancel. So let's look. Is there any value I can cross cancel? And I can. A 3 and a 3. So really, I'm left with just a 1 and a 1 here because 3 over 3 is 1. Cancels out. So now we can multiply across. 1 times 5 is 5. And 4 times 1 is 4. So the answer is 5 fourths. Now, if you're asked to write it as a mixed number, you're going to divide. So how many times does 4 go into 5? Once. 1 times 4 is 4. And what's my remainder? 1. Well, what do you do with that 1? That is your uh, numerator. It goes on the top. And what you're dividing by is on the bottom. So the answer is 1 and 1 fourth if you need a mixed number. Okay. Let's try some converting. Okay, we're going to convert a few decimals. Decimals, uh, we're going to convert a fraction to a decimal. Okay, well that's just dividing. Whenever you have a fraction, that actually means divide. Top divided by bottom. So, let's take 5 and see how many times we can divide it into 3. Well, three goes, 5 goes into 3, none. So we don't have any. So I'm going to have to add a decimal and look at 5 into 30. Well, 5 into 30 goes 6 times. Put the 6 here. Bring up my decimal. 6 times 5 is 30. There's no remainder. So the answer is just 0.6. OK, now let's look at converting 5 eighths to a decimal. OK, we're going to take 8 and see how many times it goes into 5 because a fraction is really just top divided by bottom, or 5 divided by 8. So let's set it up. How many times does 8 go into 5? Well, it doesn't. So we need to add a decimal and a 0. Now, how many times does 8 go into 50? Well, that goes 6 times. And we have a decimal right in front. So eight, or 6 times 8 is 48. So let's bring down the 48, draw the line, and subtract. So 50 minus 48 is 2. And then we have another 0 we can bring down. So how many times does 8 go into 20? Well, that's 4. Oh, I'm sorry, 2. 2 times 8 is 16. Draw the line and subtract. 20 minus 16 is 4. Bring down yet another 0. How many times does 8 go into 40? Well, the answer is 5. 5 times 8 is 40. Draw the line, subtract, we have 0. So our answer is 0 0.625. That's the decimal. OK, now let's look at converting a decimal to a per percent. OK, when you take a decimal to a percent, you're basically saying per 100. So I'm going to multiply 0 0.625 times 100. All we're going to do then is just move the decimal two places because this is a base 10 problem, or base 10. We learn a base 10s. So we're going to move it over twice. So that's going to be 62.5%. So just move the decimal twice to the right. Now let's look at converting. Let's say we have 20% and we want to convert it to a fraction. Well, per cent means per 100. That's what it means. A cent, there's 100 cents in a dollar. So that means per 100. So we're just going to put 20 over 100. And we're going to reduce that fraction. Well, if you notice, they both end in 0. So we can just divide them both by 10 by crossing out zeros. Then we have 20, uh, 2 over 10. Well, 2 goes into itself once. And 2 goes into 10, 5. So that reduces to 1 fifth. OK, and the last one we're going to do is convert 3 fourths to a percent. OK, so what we're going to have to do first is we're going to have to take it to a decimal and then take the decimal to the percent. So let's take 3 fourths. And we're going to divide. 
sorry, three fourths. We put the three on the inside, the four on the outside. So three goes into, or four goes into th three, it doesn't. So we have to add the zero. So four goes into 30, hmm, seven times. And our decimals here, seven times four is 28. Let's subtract. 30 minus 28 is two. Bring down a zero. And then four goes into 20 five times. Five times four is 20 and there is no remainder. So our answer is 0.75. Well, that's the decimal. Now, how did we go from a decimal to a percent? We multiply it by 100. So when we multiply it by 100, we move the decimal twice. So that ends up being 75%, which is 0.34 as a decimal. There you go. There's the first part of seventh grade math and review.